Usually, seeing a flock of birds taking flight overhead is a beautiful sight. They all seem to move in perfect unison and may even form a flying V. But not all animals are created equally, and there are some really funky ones out there. So join me for today's video as we take a look at the 15 most weird-looking winged animals. Number 15. Greater Sage Grouse Okay, the first spot on our list is taken by the bird known as the Greater Sage Grouse. It's the largest grouse in North America. It lives in the sagebrush country in the western United States and southern parts of Canada. More commonly known as the sage hen, it doesn't look like much at first, but during mating seasons, things can get a little funky. The adults all have pointed tails and legs with feathers from head to toe, and they really are quite beautiful and regal looking. But the adult male stands out with the yellow patches over their eyes, dark brown throat, and black belly, and their two yellow guler sacs on their neck, which inflate during courtship displays. And not a little bit, like a lot, during their courtship, the males inflate these sacs, perk up their bodies, and point their feathers to the point where they look like alien life forms. The things we do for love. Number 14. Shoebill Stork Mother Nature sure does work in mysterious ways, and it's quite possible that she made out to prank humans with the next entry on this list. Despite its looks, the shoebill stork has yet to star in a Jurassic Park film, but with a name like Bailey and Iceps Rex, it should go out for an open casting call. It belongs to the same family as the more beautiful storks, herons, spoonbills, and the picturesque flamingo, but alas, it looks like this. The shoebill stork is a real show-off with its big old clunky beak and overall scary resting face, and of course stalks the swamplands of northeastern Africa, swallowing up its favorite dish, lungfish. Lungfish are primitive fish known for being coated in a disgustingly slippery mucus, but the shoebill stork doesn't seem to mind that extra little slurp with its crunch. Oh, and when it's not eating snotty fish, it's swallowing baby turtles and crocodiles whole. Cute? No. Weird looking? Yeah, 1,000%. Number 13, Flying Squirrel. Okay, this thing we've all heard of, the Flying Squirrel, and chances are everyone here has seen one, and has even had to stop their dog from chasing one, but that's your common Eastern Gray Squirrel. The Flying Squirrel is one of 43 known species said to be native to North America, Northern Europe, and the cold depths of Siberia. But these little guys are pretty amazing. They look probably a little cuter than your eastern gray, but it's when they take flight, hopping from tree to tree, that they really stand out, looking like some sort of furry, flattened-out animal. So, technically speaking, the flying squirrel doesn't have wings, but what they do have are special membranes from their hind to their forelimbs that completely stretch out. They're fancy little built-in gliders that help them get those good acorns and escape from predators in a flash. But the flying squirrel also holds the record for gliding animals and can reach a distance of up to 288 feet in one jump. They're also nocturnal omnivores and are probably more afraid of you than you are of them. But if you look up at just the right moment, you might get lucky and catch a glimpse. Number 12. Ambotarix Okay, we've seen some modern freaky flyers, but let's flip the calendar back a bit to the late Jurassic period for the next entry on this list. The Ambotarix was a feathered dinosaur that flew between the trees in what is now modern-day China. But despite what big blockbuster movies like Jurassic Park will have you think, not all dinosaurs were giant, screaming, bloodthirsty beasts. Not only was the Ambotarix an omnivore, but it was also more akin to a bat. These dinos over time developed leathery bat-like wings to get around, and as of 2017 were only the second dinosaur to be found with these types of membranes on their wings. The adult Ambotarix only weighed a few hundred grams, and their fossils usually contained gizzard stones, just like the birds of today. It would seem that not much has changed over time, but what makes these Jurassic winged animals so interesting is that they were not actually birds. They were proper dinosaurs who were experimenting with flight, and probably one of the earliest flyers in the history of our old, old world. In fact, scientists believe that the Ambotarix was just one of four dinosaurs that learned to fly during its lifetime. Number 11, Draco Lizard. We're quickly learning now that you don't need to be a bird to fly. All you need is the right body and a can-do attitude, which is a good thing for the next high flyer on this list. 
The Draco Lizard sounds more like a monster from a video game, but in reality they're far less nefarious and far more interesting. These little guys are totally awesome and totally cute, and come equipped with a fold of skin between their elongated ribs. These colorful flaps of skin can expand and retract at will and help to keep the species alive. But how can something so simple do something so important? Well, for starters, the Draco Lizard uses these flaps to glide from tree to tree to make quick, easy, and efficient escapes when predators come too close for comfort. But not only do these wings save lives, they also help to keep the species going by helping to attract a mate. The bigger and more colorful the skin, the better the chance they have of attracting a mate and further passing on not just better survival instincts, but more reliable wings. The coolness factor doesn't stop there, because the Draco lizards also use their tails to help them steer through the air, traveling about 200 feet at a time, and they can even turn their wrists up to 90 degrees to grab their wings mid-flight and maintain even better control. The Draco lizard may be able to fly far, but they don't grow to be more than just a few inches long, tail and all. These strange little fellows can be found around the jungles of Southeast Asia and help the area's pest control by keeping the termite and ant populations at bay. Number 10. Colugo Squirrels aren't the only furry fellows that can fly about. Certain species of lemurs have joined in the fun as well. The colugo, or flying lemur, is a primitive little gliding mammal found only in Southeast Asia and very specific places in the Philippines. And just like the flying squirrel, the colugo doesn't flap its wings and fly, but instead glides using the same long, thin membrane that connects its limbs. But unlike the flying squirrel, the colugo's membrane connects their tail to their limbs as well, giving them extra advantage when the time comes to make a quick, slick aerial maneuver. And although they live up in the trees high above anything that can eat them below, the colugo are terrible climbers because of their webbed toes. These guys are much better off in the air when they can reach a height of about 3,200 feet without losing any altitude. But perhaps even more importantly, they're just so damn cute with their tiny ears and giant eyes that just kind of melt your heart. Plus, it's not uncommon to see a mother's young attached to her underside as she flies through the air as well. Number 9. Oriental Bay Owl this owl species may come off as creepy and strange to some, but the Oriental Bay Owl is one serious cutie. This nocturnal species can be found in Southeast Asia, specifically in Thailand, in dense evergreen forests near bodies of water. But it's also the Oriental Bay Owl's face that really makes it stand out. It's got a heart-shaped face accompanied by some ear-like extensions, but it's those massive black eyes that will get you. This owl looks like it has giant black marbles shoved right into its eye sockets. All the better to see you with, my dear. This species of owl likes to hide out in holes and tree stumps while roosting and nesting. But those big eyes really come in handy when it's time for the nightly hunt. When the sun goes down, the oriental bay owl is alert and ready to go while it perches itself on tree branches, using the foliage as cover before it's time to strike. Number 8. Tawny Owl Strix aluco, also known as the tawny owl, is a true owl that sticks to living in the Palearctic region just south of the Iberian Peninsula, and is the most common owl in England. But the tawny owl likes to hang its hat anywhere there is thick foliage, so forests are a popular place to spot one of these owls. But it's not uncommon to find them in places like gardens and cemeteries. As long as there's a good place to hide and great food in the area, they'll take it. The tawny owl is primarily nocturnal, and they take to the wing to hunt between dusk and dawn, looking for their favorite foods. That includes rodents and insects, but they'll also go for other birds and even amphibians. But the tawny owl is non-migratory and incredibly territorial, so if you're ever going for a walk in the lush English countryside and hear the loud screeching call of the tawny owl, then you'll know that you're getting too close to their nests, which they will happily defend at all costs. Number 7. Barn Owl All right, now we're moving on to the owl species that you may already know. I'm talking, of course, about the common barn owl. The Taito Alba, or barn owl, is one of the most widespread and commonly found owls out there. Believe it or not, but the barn owl is found on every continent except for Antarctica. But it's this owl's characteristic heart-shaped face that really melts even the coldest of hearts. Barn Owl is strictly a nocturnal hunter, and despite the cuteness factor, is silent and deadly when it comes time to eat. 
But when they do decide to make their presence known and communicate with one another instead of hooting, they unleash a creepy, raspy call out into the darkness. While these little guys are nesting, they're going to be feeding on small rodents like voles, rats, and mice to keep not only their bellies full, but those of their young, too. So if you find one hiding in either your barn or near the garden, let them stay put because they offer a cheap alternative to calling an exterminator. The barn owl has amazing hearing to help locate their prey in the brush, and their downy feathers help conceal their winged approach, allowing for a stealthy approach to snag their meal. Number 6. Kakapo Parrot There are so many beautiful parrots flapping their wings around the world, sporting gorgeous shades of blue, yellow, red, and what feels like every other color in the rainbow. But too bad the Kakapo Parrot isn't one of them. This is a flightless parrot native to New Zealand, and it's also one of the strangest looking winged animals. The first thing you'll notice is their color. Instead of vibrant feathers, the kakapo parrot goes for an earth tone that allows them to blend in almost perfectly with surrounding foliage. So why is this? Well, because they can't fly away from a hungry predator, their best line of defense is to never be found at all. And while they may not be able to fly, the kakapo parrot is a great climber, using its wings to help them maintain balance while scaling up and jumping between the branches. These odd parrots are totally nocturnal, spending the majority of their nights pursuing for food, which they're able to sniff out to perfection thanks to their killer olfactory senses. But on the flip side, their eyesight is kind of lackluster, to say the least. And while these kakapo parrots may be amazing, they're sadly on the brink of extinction, but not for the reasons you'd think. They're victims of human intervention, but not deforestation. Human settlers brought dogs with them and rats followed for the free food, and both beasts have made good meals of the flightless, scruffy bird. In 1995, there were only 51 kakapo left, and thanks to conservation efforts, that number has nearly tripled as of today. Number 5. Bee Hummingbird Cuba is home to great music, delicious food, beautiful cars, and even more beautiful people. But it's also home to the smallest species of bird in the world. On average, the bee hummingbird doesn't grow much more than two inches long, which is how it's earned its name. When these little birds are fluttering and buzzing about, they may seem too small to see at first, so it's pretty easy to see why someone might confuse them with a bee. And while they're two totally different species, they're still eating a lot of the same cuisine, nectar. But unlike the honeybee, this hummingbird is more known for its gorgeous, shiny blue plumage. And the world's smallest bird is going to lay some of the world's smallest eggs. The eggs of the bee hummingbird aren't much larger than a single coffee bean. So be careful not to crush them when you're walking through the Cuban wilderness. But when an animal is so small, that also means that they have an incredibly fast metabolism, which means an enormous appetite. They store less energy and burn through it faster, so they're constantly eating, and the bee hummingbird is no exception to that rule. These little flappers need to drink so much nectar that they can pollinate as many as 1,500 flowers in one day. The bee hummingbird may take to the wing all day, but it sure knows how to cover a lot of ground. Number 4. Honduran White Bat Bats tend to get a pretty bad rap, but the creatures of the night aren't all that scary. In fact, some of them are just downright adorable, and the Honduran white bat may just be the cutest of them all. These little guys are found in Central America, and despite their name, they turn up in eastern Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and western Panama. Sometimes referred to as the white tent-making bat, these small leaf-nosed bats roost in the folds of what to them are giant leaves. But they are pretty easy to spot, with their bright yellow wings, ears, nose, and of course their white hair. But interestingly enough, the Honduran white bat is the first mammal known to incorporate carotenoids, red, orange, and yellow pigments, into their skin. They get these colors from their exclusive diet of fruit, giving new meaning to you are what you eat. These bats are social and live in colonies, roosting in numbers between 2 and 15 at a time. But because they're so small, the Honduran white bat has a high metabolism and needs to eat constantly, so they'll spend most of their night feeding on their favorite food, figs. Unfortunately, though, the Honduran fruit bat is also a nearly endangered species, with deforestation being their biggest threat. Number 3. Great Putus Try not to laugh when you hear about this next weird winged animal. The putu is one of the funniest winged animals you'll ever see. 
Kutus are a family of birds closely related to night jars and frog mouths and live in the tropical regions of Central and South America. But the great putu has deep black beady eyes that look more akin to a great white shark. And their diet is pretty similar too, because these nocturnal birds prey on both insects and smaller vertebrates and are the largest of their species. But aside from the big creepy eyes, the great putu's other claim to fame is its unique yet chilling moan or growl that it vocalizes at night. So if you're ever traversing the South or Central American jungles and hear some sort of scary screech, fear not, as it's probably just the great putus. And to add a little bit to the weirdness factor, these birds have a head that's a little too big relative to their body size, and they have a short, stubby, broad beak. Not really sure what Mother Nature was thinking when she concocted this bird, but on average the putu grows to a weigh about 32 ounces, 2 feet in length, and has a wingspan of about 29 inches. They camouflage into the foliage at night with their brown, gray, and burgundy feathers, and so the best way to spot them is to catch them in the moon's reflection with their massive, deep black, and beady eyes. Number 2. Japanese Flying Squid Japan is home to all sorts of interesting and unique things. Square watermelons, capsule hotels, cat cafes, and of course, a flying squid. The Japanese flying squid is an eight-armed, two-tentacle cephalopod native to the Pacific coast, and it's built up quite the reputation for itself because of its ability to leap out of the water and cover some pretty impressive distances. But don't worry, you won't be swatting away the squids while you're walking the neon streets of Tokyo anytime soon, because like the previous entries on this list, the Japanese flying squid doesn't have wings either. Instead, they're able to use their own jet propulsion to shoot themselves up and out of the water and open their arms and fins to glide up to 100 feet through the air. These squids fly through the air to evade and escape predators, especially during mating season, and hang out at the top layer of the oceans to make it easier to breach the surface. But perhaps even cooler than launching themselves so far through the air is that they have three hearts and can shoot natural ink at their predators to help make a clean escape. Number 1. Greater Adjutant Taking the top spot on this list is a winged animal that looks like it fell from the top of the ugly tree and managed to hit every branch on the way down. The Greater Adjutant may not seem like it at first glance, but it's a member of the stork family. The Greater Adjutant really lives up to its name, too, because it's the largest member of the family, growing to be about 5 feet tall. That's one big bird and their wingspan is even longer, measuring to be about 8 feet on average. But this ugly, yet somehow still beautiful bird has a pretty distinct look with its completely bare red and yellow skinned neck, and a head with a nice white collar ruff at its base, meaning it looks like an old man wearing an even older knit sweater. They've got their huge, wedge-shaped bill and their inflatable pouch just below that naked neck, which turns bright orange during mating season to let the opposite sex know they're ready to go. But the greater adjutant has been around for a long time. So long, in fact, that Babur, the great Mughal emperor whose reign lasted from the year 1504 to 1526, created a myth surrounding the bald-headed bird. He said that a snake stone was present within the bird's skull, which could act as an antidote for snake venom and poison. Babur claimed that the stone was incredibly rare, considering you not only had to catch the giant bird, but then kill it without letting its bill touch the ground, because once that happens, the stone evaporates. How many hunters were able to catch these mythical brain rocks are up for debate, but you have to admit that it's still a pretty cool story. And even in India, people using folk medicine believe that chewing a piece of greater adjutant flesh could cure leprosy, but the odds of that bird's saggy skin tasting like chicken are pretty slim. Watch our Animals playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.